Shopify store owners, this is a case study on how we generated $2,127,274.96 in 30 days for a Shopify lifestyle brand with a highly profitable return on ad spend and without sorting to deep discounts or sales. So as you can see, this is a case study from uh, the 10th of December, 2023 to the 8th of January, 2024. We spent 563,000 and we generated $2.1 million uh, in sales with a cost per purchase of around $29 and a 3.77 return ad spend, which basically means for every dollar we spent on the ads, we generated $3.77 uh, back. So some context on the brand, prior to us working together, this brand had a successful physical store selling the same items of clothing, but was only generating around eight to 10K a month via the online shop. This was done without any Facebook ads. Uh, we were the first people to run Facebook and Instagram ads for her web shop, as we were the ones that set up the business manager, set up the ad accounts and so on and so forth. Then before we begin, all of the examples, the case studies and references in this case study are real. We are real growth consultants based in the United Kingdom, as well as the Netherlands. And no, I have nothing to sell you here. I just want to show you how you can do it for yourself and then think about working with us. It's my goal to simply give you as much value for free here that nobody can question whether or not these strategies actually work. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Well, our approach, you know, our experience running Shopify fashion brands is performance based and data driven focusing on a less is more strategy built on the following four key pillars. Number one is crafting your offer. Number two is conversion rate optimization. Number three is understanding the numbers. And number four is augmenting the store traffic. So with crafting the offer, what we did was we focused and doubled down on what worked. So for Shopify store owners, the key to success is to focus on what already works. The Pareto principle states that roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. And with Shopify, with e-commerce, that is the exact same. Roughly 80% of a company's revenue come from 20% of its products. By identifying the key 20% of products that leads to the majority of results, you can optimize your resources and maximize your output. So what we did was focus on the best selling products and the best selling products only. To enhance the profitability of the brand, we concentrated over 80% of our marketing and inventory on the best seller products. Spreading resources thinly across all products can lead to low margins and stagnant inventory. Successful brands like Louis Vuitton and Chanel focus on demand-driven products, streamlining their strategy for efficient marketing and repeat sales cycles. This approach, focused on the best sellers, leads to faster sales, higher profits, and a stronger market position. Even during the economic turndown, essentially prioritizing what works is key to thriving on Shopify. So how can we identify the best sellers? Well, if you are wanting to have similar results, then what you need to do is in Shopify, go to your analytics tab and then look at the top products by units sold. Make sure that you select um, a, you know, a window that has enough data. So for example, year to date, um, last 365 days or something along those lines. And then you'll be able to see the top products where units sold and then focus your marketing efforts on those products. Then another aspect we looked at is how we could increase the customer's lifetime value and the average order value of that first order by implementing effective strategies. So to increase the average order value, so the amount that someone purchases, uh, we added a frequently bought together tab in the slide card drawer to encourage customers to add complementary items to their cards, thereby increasing the average order value. Another app we use to increase the average order value is called Reconvert. Reconvert is an app that lets you add different types of upsells to your checkout and thank you page, helping you increase your average order value and maximize profits. The approach we use to increase the lifetime value is by creating a nature campaign via Klaviyo and by doing additional remarketing on Facebook. By providing personalized content and exclusive promotions to existing customers, we were able to build loyalty and encourage repeat purchases. Additionally, offering free shipping or rewards for repeat purchases can also contribute to an increased lifetime value. Then number two, optimizing the buyer's journey, also known as conversion rate optimization. Just like focusing on the best sellers, we applied a similar tactic to the overall buyer's journey. 
following the 80-20 principle, we optimize the most common buyer's journey as much as we could. And with mobile shopping now becoming increasingly dominating you know, within the e-commerce space, uh, we basically optimized everything for mobile. So it's now crucial to prioritize mobile website optimization over desktop to meet customer expectations. So far, we've concluded that we focused on the best selling products and we've made our buyer's journey on mobile as user friendly as possible. A user friendly mobile web shop contains a simplistic and clear design, and that is the precondition if you want to stay relevant. So the average customer journey for our clients in this case, and probably for you the same, will look something like this. Potential customer clicks on the ad. Potential customer lands on either the home page or the collection page, depending on where you're sending them. Potential customer clicks on the product that they like. Potential customer adds that product to cart. He then initiates checkout and places an order, hopefully. Well, that is the order in which we need to view our funnel, which more on that uh, in just a sec. The metric we use to analyze the optimization of the buyer's journey is called the conversion rate. And it's something that you can also find in your analytics tab on Shopify. So again, go to Shopify, click on your analytics tab, and then look at conversion rate. Now, as you can see on this example, the conversion rate is 1.69%. That basically means for every 100 people that view the website, uh, there's at least one person that clicks through and places an order. So simply put, if your store conversion rate is 1%, that means that for every 100 people, you get one purchase. If your store conversion rate is 6%, that means for every 100 people, you get six purchases. The aim was to get the conversion rates of the store as high as possible. However, there is no right or wrong when it comes to conversion rate. It depends on a number of factors, your profit margin percentage, your average order value, and from a paid traffic standpoint, your cost per outbound click. But again, more on this later. So above, you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of another client Shopify brand before and after we implemented the changes mentioned in this case study. So as you see on the left-hand side, from the 1st of August to the 31st of August, uh, we generated 12,000 in sales. And then the same year in November, so the 1st to the 30th of November, we generated 63,000 in sales. Now, believe it or not, this is actually with a very similar amount spent on Facebook and Instagram. The big difference here is an increased store conversion rate. And of course, we have to mention it. Uh, it was during Black Friday, of course, that we got. Um, an increased amount of sales. So we do obviously need to uh, mention that, um, that the Black Friday sales are included in this screenshot, but nevertheless, it is a large improvement. Then preventing the customers from abandoning cart. The add to cart button must be clearly visible above the fold. So originally from the newspaper publishing, above the fold now refers to the web page content visible without scrolling. So as you can see on the right-hand side, we have a screenshot of a uh, Gymshark product page and the add to bag or add to cart is above the fold. You do not need to scroll to see this. And that is the most optimized version of a product page. Then the second reason for people abandoning their cart is shipping costs. So one effective solution we implemented was to offer free shipping by slightly increasing our product prices by about seven to 10%. This approach allowed us to maintain our profit margins while reducing cart abandonment. We saw a reduction in the cost per purchase in Facebook and Instagram ads of $16 when removing the $5 shipping costs. So basically, by removing the shipping, the brand owner actually made $11 more. Then, thirdly, social proof. People often base their decisions on what other people do, especially when shopping. So social proof, reviews, testimonials, etc., can all increase sales. About half of the shoppers visit the brand's website or social media after reading a positive review. So to make shopping easier and encourage purchases, include plenty of social proof like reviews and ratings on your web shop. Then putting the pieces together, after we've done all this, we run the paid traffic. So with the website optimized, it's now time to attract visitors. And Facebook advertising was obviously you know, a quick way to do this. It's effective for targeting traffic both on Facebook as well as Instagram. Essential for Shopify stores looking to build their online presence in 2024 is obviously using meta ads. However, spending more on Facebook ads doesn't always mean better results. Success depends on the quality of the ads, not just the budget. Smart ad strategies focused on quality and the long term are key to making Facebook advertising worthwhile. So third pillar, we had the offer. Then we had the conversion rate optimization. This is the third pillar, understanding the numbers. 
To ensure profitability in online advertising, it's crucial to focus on key metrics like the average order value, the cost per purchase or cost per acquisition, and the return on ad spend, ROAS. What we need to do is we need to calculate the break-even return on ad spend, which is one divided by the profit margin percentage, to determine the minimum ROAS needed to break even. Because if you get a 2x return on ad spend, which means for every dollar you spend, you get $2 back, that may sound profitable, but it does not include your cost of goods sold. If you have a 25% profit margin, for example, a 2x return ad spend is not actually enough. You're still losing half the money because there's no profit margin to cover the cost of goods sold. So as we say here, for example, with a 60% profit margin, a break-even return on ad spend of 1.66 means for every dollar we spend, you need $1.66 back in return to break even. Also, calculate your true break-even cost of pages considering your average order value and profit margin. Keep in mind that reported revenue, so the revenue that you see in Shopify and in Facebook, includes additional costs like VAT and shipping, which actually will affect your net revenue. So deduct these costs as well as the cost of goods sold from your reported revenue to find your gross profit. Divide the gross profit by the net revenue to find your net profit margin. Even with a positive return ad spend, it's essential to consider all costs, including VAT, including shipping and cost of goods sold to understand your true profitability. This detailed financial understanding is vital before starting any ad campaign to ensure that you are actually profitable. Then, adjusting your ad columns for a clear overview. Remember when we had said that we optimize the buyer's journey on Shopify? We kind of do the same thing on Facebook. So Facebook offers a lot of data metrics and that can actually be quite overwhelming. So what we did was we rebuilt the customer journey on Facebook so that we only had the metrics and columns that we needed to focus on. So the ones that we used were ad set name, budget, amount spent, the outbound click, which is the click that goes from Facebook onto the website, the cost per outbound click, the click-through rate, view content, so someone viewing the product page, the cost per view content, add to cart, the cost per add to cart, initiate checkout, the cost per initiate checkout, purchase, cost per purchase, also known as CPA, purchase conversion value, which is revenue generated through the ads, and the ROAS return on ad spend. When you've selected these columns, you can also create a preset out of this, so you don't need to do this every single time um, by clicking on the Save as Preset button in the left bottom of the uh, column pop-up. Then the fourth pillar, Augment and Store Traffic. So now that everything is optimized, we understand our numbers, it's now time to actually run the ads to the store. Shopify brands almost always want more purchases, and for that reason, the only campaign that we recommend our clients are sales campaigns. So this is the same with this client as well. When you click on create a new campaign, you select the sales objective. Forget about awareness, figure out traffic. We don't want engagements, we want sales. We want that bottom line number to be as big as possible for our clients. Conversion campaigns are basically a way of telling Facebook and Instagram that you only want potential customers on the website, not just anybody. We don't want browsers, we want buyers. So you optimize for a conversion event, and of course, in this case, that is purchase. We helped our clients 15X their return on ad spend just by running consistent sale campaigns and forget about all the other vanity metrics like engagements and page likes and stuff like that. The three levels to the overall campaign were as follows. We had a top of funnel where we run campaigns focused on cold traffic, so people that have never heard of your Shopify brand before. Middle of funnel is where we focused on potential customers that already know who you are, but have not really made a purchase yet or done anything like that. So they've been onto the website, they've engaged with you on social media, but they haven't placed an order yet. And then bottom of funnel, which are basically the warm leads. These are people that have already taken some kind of action like add to cart or initiate checkout, but just haven't placed that order yet. And then throughout the different stages of the funnel, we made sure that our messaging was different to reflect the stage that the potential customer was in in that buyer's journey. Then audience targeting. Ad sets on Facebook are basically where you define the audience, including the relevant interests. However, it's not about creating very specific small pools of audiences as this limits Facebook's machine learning capabilities. Keeping the audience definition process simple can actually lead to significant revenue gains, embracing the principle that less is more. So while interest-based targeting is useful for specific image testing with a particular group, it's not ideal for scaling. 
The goal is to make your ads converse with a broad audience, which is the largest audience and offers the most potential for growth. So this means no interest targeting, no gender specification, no placement specification, just keep it everything broad and simple. Okay, so the five stages of awareness, which is a concept from Eugene Swartz in his book, Breakthrough Advertising, explains that understanding the customer's mindset is crucial. The most aware audience is ready to buy, but is a relatively small audience and not infinitely scalable. On the other hand, the unaware audience is the largest, but the most challenging to engage. Successfully converting this audience into your sales funnel can be highly rewarding because it's the biggest audience. So you basically need to figure out a way to get your ads to convert with the unaware audience because once you crack that code, you can scale to the moon. And that is why we push for running everything on broad. So when scaling, using detailed targeting makes zero business sense for three reasons. No one, it adds cost. Customization on your delivery comes at a premium. So we reach fewer people for more money, which of course is bad. Number two, these audiences will ultimately fatigue. They are depreciating assets. It's like buying a stock high and then selling it low. You invest heavily in training Facebook's machine learning to do something that only gets worse over time. And then thirdly, these audiences are ultimately obsolete technology. Facebook's early ad distribution was similar to Google Displays at the time with random audience reach. Now though, quality ads on platforms like Instagram in prime positions early in the feed while less engaging ads appear later on and obviously cost more. So overpaying for ads can limit their reach by narrowing targeting. Many media buyers are unaware of this, of course, and that is obviously leading to stagnating ad performance. So to address this, Facebook has actually now said that they will deliver ads beyond the audiences you've selected if it's likely to improve performance. So technically, this means that you're still targeting broad anyway, you're just paying a premium price for it. So in what situations do you use interest-based targeting? Well, we use it for quick wins and short-term testing, i.e. creative testing, angle testing, and copy testing, but only then. So not when we are trying to scale. We scale on broad. So in line with how broad targeting works best, when we focus on first-time buyers, we also recommend Facebook's machine learning to do its thing. So Facebook knows more than us about finding the ideal customers. So when building your audience on the ad set level, we advise to leave everything broad. So all the placements, all the genders, no interests, and only selected in a specific country. Facebook then has the best opportunity to find the right customers for your business. Then what we did for this brand was we stacked the middle of funnel and bottom of funnel together and we retargeted the drop-offs. So consumers cannot purchase the first time around for hundreds of different reasons, including you know, they're too busy at the time, they're unsure of the product, um, they found out that the shipping costs that they didn't really like, and that is why retargeting is vital. Sometimes customers just need that little reminder that they were about to place an order. So we recommend retargeting customers continuously throughout the different stages of the buyer's journey. It's a different story if someone drops off on your homepage after not viewing a single product in comparison to someone who drops off at the point of an initiation and checkout. Therefore, the messaging has to be different. The further down the funnel someone gets, the more to the point the retargeting needs to be. For example, in the case that somebody initiated checkout but didn't place an order, you could retarget that person with a free shipping code in your ad copy as an ethical bribe to get that person to come back and place the order and become part of your customer base. Retargeting audiences that we'd recommend creating are website visitors in the last 180 days that have not purchased, Facebook engages in the last year that have not purchased, Instagram engages in the last year that have not purchased, and people that have viewed content or added to cart in the last 30 days but have not purchased. Okay, so now that we know that, we are going to start the ads. So to avoid wasting the ad budget, it's crucial to know how to set up the ads effectively. Your ad creatives should be eye-catching to stop the customers from scrolling. Surprisingly, our research shows that the most successful ads often use simple camera shots. So not these high quality photo shoots and user generated content and stuff like that. Um, just literally simple images, which we like to call lifestyle images of customers wearing the clothes, neatly folded items, um, you know, or just a random studio shot with the white background is just as effective. Customers appreciate the authentic glimpse of what they'll receive, which in this case works very well in fashion. Then the copy. 
will affect the advertising the ad copy call to action should directly speak to your target audience and emphasize the product's benefits. So tailor your message to your brand's niche. So for example, sustainability or streetwear, anything like that. While traditional long form copy can educate consumers, it's less effective for products under $300 due to their short attention spans. So as you can see here on the right hand side, these are some examples. Um, we use concise resonant messaging with an, an emoji or two, and then really let the visuals or the creatives do all the talking. Simply put, the content is now the copy. Then when retargeting, adjust your ad copy to highlight social proof or reviews or small discounts to entice potential customers. As I mentioned earlier, the ethical bribe. Then when it comes to the creative testing, this obviously varies by brands as each has unique traits and audiences. We don't believe in the cookie cutter approach. Um, obviously, you know, this whole case study is the best practice for this client and this brand. Uh, you need to figure out for yourself what kind of creative works best for your brand. So creative testing varies by brand. Uh, we avoid the one size fits all method and instead use Advantage Plus for budget efficient app placements tailored to individual brand needs. Though specific tactics uh, may differ, we've identified three creatives that are effective across most brands that we've scaled over 1 million sales on Facebook. Number one being carousels, where we basically give someone a digital window shopping experience, where we have up to 10 images or videos back to back. For fashion brands, this format is ideal for showcasing a range of products like the best selling items, allowing customers to see various options without needing to search on the website. Instead of a single item, present the eight to 10 best sellers that are most likely to be bought, and then just create free variations of the carousel ad with different images of the same items to maximize appeal. Then the second one is Reels. So Facebook introduced Reels, short vertical looping videos, similar to TikTok, to keep up with the demand for engaging content. Reels optimize for mobile viewing allow advertisers to showcase their brands creatively in the user's feeds. And then to this day, I still advocate for images in ads. They are straightforward and impactful on Facebook as well as Instagram. Uh, we use a 9 to 16 ratio uh, for versatility across the feed and story ads as Facebook automatically adjusts the format accordingly. Then launching the campaigns. Um, so if you are completely new to Facebook, what I would recommend is starting off with $100 a day focusing 95% on acquiring new customers and only 5% on retargeting. And that is exactly how we started for this brand as well. So for the latter, the 5% combined middle of funnel and bottom of funnel efforts into one campaign targeting the recent website visitors and social media engages. Then test this with a carousel, a single image and a reel to discover which variation or which creative works best. Focus on the most successful creative, monitor your analytics to maintain a profitable cost per acquisition and return ad spend, and then adjust your ad spend by 20% for profitable ads and consider scaling them further. When we do get to the scaling part, 95% of the budget should still target the new customers with only 5% or less on the middle and bottom of funnel. Monitor the retargeting frequency as a guide as well with the retargeting. If the frequency is above four, that means that you're overspending on the retargeting. Realistically, we don't actually spend any more than $150 a day on the retargeting, even for the accounts that have over 10K a day in spend. Avoid relying on a single successful ad. Continuously seek and test new trends, new ads, new angles, and audiences to find more winners. So turn off what doesn't work, continue with what does, and keep, keep testing. This approach ensures sustainability and growth, protecting against platform changes or ad performance drops, preventing a return to square one. Always aim to have multiple successful ads to scale effectively. Then when we do start scaling, that is where we get to the fun part. Once you get to 1,000 to 5,000 a day in spend, uh, ironically, this is probably the least stressful part of this whole process because you have a foundation that is set up correctly. We know our metrics, we know our numbers, we have product market fits, otherwise you wouldn't make it that far. However, if you've not set everything up correctly, like we've outlined in this document, things can take a turn for the worst. So if you're relying on hope instead of data, you could get yourself into trouble. Simplicity scales as complexity fills. Make sure you don't get too technical when setting up these campaigns and set it up in, a most, in this most simple way possible. As mentioned earlier, the goal is to get to broad. So don't work against the algorithm and just let Facebook do its thing. If you followed what we've outlined in this document, in this case study, then Facebook should be working in your favor. 
when it gets to scaling, there are three frameworks that we like to use. Number one being vertical CPO scaling, where we increase the budget of the proven campaign by 20% every 48 hours and only increase if it's stable and profitable. So if the return has been goes down, then stop the scaling and make sure that you adjust accordingly. That's why you always wait for at least 48 hours before scaling again. If you accidentally reset Facebook's learning phase, wait an extra day to make sure that your results are still consistent. Then the second method is quick fire scale. Increase the budget by 20%, wait for two minutes exactly, and then increase again by 20%. Only do the second 20% increase if you didn't reset the learning phase. And thirdly, duplicate the winning ad sets into a new campaign and raise the budget by 30 to 40%. Every week, just keep testing and scaling the ads that have a profitable cost for purchase and the ROAS for your brand. Keep it simple. So, summary and next steps. If you made it this far into this case study, you now have a full understanding of the four pillars that we use to scale this brand to 2.1 million in 30 days and how you can scale your brand to a million dollars plus. Scaling a brand can be complex, requiring careful consideration, planning and execution. However, Facebook is one of the best places for Shopify stores and fashion brands to run ads on thanks to its brilliant active monthly users and in-depth targeting features across its networks. All that is left for you to do now is to implement this and do it for yourself. But results may not be the best because it does take a long time and a lot of attention, which may actually cost you more in the long run. Or you can work with us and reach one million in sales in probably half the time without the mistakes that you may face. So as growth marketers, we do encourage Shopify stores to directly contact us for a free consultation. We will gladly assist uh, without obligation you know, with advice on how to approach your particular challenge. All inquiries will be taken seriously and answered individually by ourselves. So we don't outsource to any third parties or anything like that. We do everything in-house. So for those that do actually want to work with us, what is going to happen if you partner with us? Well, you'll be able to make more sales and profits while reducing your costs. Your sales will grow consistently each month. You'll be at ease because you now have an expert who can do all of this for you. You can get to a million plus in a year if you use our advice properly. You'll be able to know your customers on a deeper level. You can finally get rid of that cookie cutter agency you've been annoyed at. You can forget about your sales ever plateauing and you'll feel confident because you'll know exactly what is happening. We like to keep our clients in the loop at all times. And because of this no risk offer and us maintaining the quality of our work, we do obviously have limited spots. So if you do want to take advantage of this opportunity, if you want to take advantage of our scales tactics, then all you need to do is click on the book a call button below and we can see if we can help you further. I look forward to chatting with you.